Like, God, Shinzo's great. Hey guys, for the Apple Reviews here. And today I'll be reviewing chapter 195 of My Hero Academia. Uh, I apologize if my voice is a little more raspy than usual or if the hood's distracting or something. I'm a little sick, a little under the weather, so I'm trying to sweat out the sickness and I just want to get these reviews out anyway. So I'm going to do my best here, but uh, I might need to drink some tea or something in the middle of this. So chapter 195 continues off right where we left off with uh, Shinzo appearing to uh, participate in the class 1A and 1B training exercise, which is super awesome. I know a lot of people have been waiting for Shinzo, and I don't think I like him as much as a lot of the rest of the fandom did. Or or I, I guess, yeah, I didn't after this chapter, a little bit different, but uh, we'll get to that. But I think it's really cool seeing him back again, even right at the beginning of this chapter. I was like, just pretty stoked, you know, like something new to be added, even though we have all of Class 1B that's also new. I mean, it's like Horikoshi's kind of spoiling us with uh, different kinds of content that can be created with all these characters interacting that we haven't seen before, and I really appreciate that. Shinzo's attitude towards the rest of the class is really funny as well. Uh, Sero mentions that he's like an early Todoroki, saying like, I'm not here to make friends, I'm just here to like, do my stuff and become the uh, hero, you know, use my quirk the best way I can. And I mean, Shinzo's obviously a little different. He has like, his complex about like, people thinking he's villainous by nature because of his quirk and whatnot. But, uh... It's comparable to Todoroki and just like the fact that he was so off-putting towards people and didn't really want to make friends or anything So seeing that parallel is kind of cool and Todoroki I like his reaction to when Sero said that he's just kind of like, huh, really? Like he's come a long way He's just kind of like he can't even see himself like that anymore, which is uh, fantastic. The training exercise will be as follows There will be a uh, Four team, five teams of four, I'm sorry. Five teams of four from each class and Shinzo will join one team from each class so Two of the matches will be 5v4 rather than 4v4, which you think would be at a disadvantage, but Horikoshi, being a good writer, actually addresses this and says, well, be well, he says it through Vlad, but he says, uh, well, because Shinzo is, you know, such a new student, he's so inexperienced and stuff, even though his quirk is really powerful, he it might prove a disadvantage to try to, you know, coordinate with him because he's just, he hasn't had the training that you guys had, and for Class A, who's had even less training than Class 1B, he, uh, he hasn't had that crisis, he hasn't had to deal with anything like that, so, I mean, the most he's done, like, combat and, like, uh, whatnot-wise, like, hero work-wise, is the sports festival, and that's just a festival that he did pretty well in. The exercise is heroes versus villains, but both sides are simultaneously heroes and villains, so they're both trying to capture each other. It's not like one team has to capture the other and one just has to evade them or something, which is what my initial thought was. No. Uh, Ida mentions that, like, oh my god, what are we, heroes or villains? Like, you know, he's freaking out like he kind of did during the first exercise in the, uh, the anime, which is um, pretty cool, uh, I guess. The cage that you put the people in, like, once they're captured, is, like, has Nezu on it, and it says, like, 99,999 years of hard labor, and just shame, and just random shit on it. I fucking love that stuff. It's just so ridiculous. I, I, I don't know. Nezu's awesome. I wish he was, like, here, some, like, helping with the exercise somehow. I mean, All Might and Midnight are. They appear in a little bit later in the chapter, and uh, Mina actually thinks that they have a thing going on, and Midnight mentions that she's not into older men, which is... Pretty, pretty true, because she seems to have a thing for way too young men, which is kind of weird how she got a job at UA, but that's a conversation for a totally different day. I almost forgot to mention about the exercise, Bakugo astutely mentions that it's when four people get captured from either team, they, they lose. Like, so, and if the time runs out, then uh, whoever has the most people. But Bakugo mentions that it's four people, so the two teams of five, it doesn't matter. If four of them get captured, it's over. So if like Shinzo was doing great for some reason, he didn't get captured, but everyone else did, Shinzo still fails. That's a nice little detail I like that like Bakugo noticed because he's intelligent and I like these little moments that show his intelligence without, you know, just putting it right in your face because he's usually such an asshole. I, I don't know. He just doesn't come off as smart unless you like have really gotten to know his character. And I, these moments are what kind of showcase that. So ba Bakugo basically rudely mentions that like, okay, so whoever has Shinzo on their team just has dead weight basically because they still only when four people are captured, like it's over. So Shinzo is just dead weight basically. And I mean, that's pretty rude, especially considering how good his quirk is. But I think it's really funny that Shinzo, like, Sero, Shero, Sero mentions, like, that's pretty rude, dude, and Shinzo's just like, eh, it's cool, it's pretty much true. Like, God, Shinzo's great, just for little things like that, he's just like, so chill, not trying to, like, like be like, hey, Bakugo, fuck you, or anything like that, he's just like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm just trying to do my best here, I need, I'm way behind everyone, so I need to do this stuff and get in here, so, I mean, yeah, if I'm dead weight now, I am, like, 
God, Shinzo's great, and his character development is on point. So the next page we see is like all the teams and whatnot, and I'm not going to break all of them down because, well, there's a lot, but I will mention some highlights and like things that I'm excited to see. And also, for, I'm going to mention the team that has Toru and uh, Tokoyami on it. Toru is just petting Dark Shadow. How adorable. Uh, anyway. I like that in the first team for Class 1A, uh, Kaminari is there, you know, with uh, Kirishima, who's always been his buddy, he has his arm over him, but he also has his arm over Koda, like, Koda's my least favorite member in all of Class 1A, just for the record, I don't like him at all, but I like that uh, Kirishima, I mean, sorry, uh, Kaminari's kind of like, including him, you know, like, trying to be buddy-buddy with him, too, like, if Koda became not my least favorite, I wouldn't be against it, it's just like, I have no reason to like him right now, and, uh, Hope that changes a little bit with this uh, little fight maneuver thingy. It doesn't look like it though, because Cody gets captured pretty early. I'm really excited to see the Beast guy from the first team from Class 1B too, which we do see in this chapter, because like I've always been really interested in him. He just seems like he has a good all-around quirk, and that kind of shows in this chapter. Uh, I'm also excited to see the manga panel guy. I forgot which team he's exactly. I'm not looking at the picture right now, but uh, I'm excited to see him as well because you know he's his face is a manga page. Like what? What does he do? <laughs> like I don't. I'm so curious. And then uh, of course from the last matchup here we have Deku, Deku and his whole team. You know he has Uraraka, Mina, and Mineta on his team, I believe. And then Manoma and some other uh, Class One B students are on, uh, on another team. And I'm really excited to see Manoma and how he interacts with One for All or just. You know, whatever. If he doesn't copy it, that'd be a little disappointing, but he might copy Shinzo's quirk, because uh, Shinzo actually landed on Monoma's team. He also landed on, for the Class 1A side, he landed on uh, on uh, Kaminari and Kirishima's team. Shinzo would make the numbers odd, so he has to be on uh, one team from each class, basically. I wish I could say I'm more excited to see other students in Class 1B. Uh, I mean, I'm excited to see Kendo and Tetsu Tetsu. We already seen them a little bit, though. As well as, like, a, the pony girl. I, I don't know. Something about her, I've always found her kind of cute. She's like a foreign exchange student. She doesn't speak very good Japanese, which I just think is a funny uh, character quirk. Not quirk quirk, a character quirk. But, uh, yeah, I, I wish I could be more excited about this. I just don't know a lot about Class 1B, which is good reason to be excited for every match because I mean they're all going to show off so much of their quirks I mean I know a little bit there's like a quicksand guy there's a guy that makes the the uh, air force fields I mean there's there's some cool quirks on there it's just that like none of them really stuck out to me because the only other time I've really seen them has been um, the sports festival and then kendo and tetsu tetsu during the, the Haya, uh, not the Haya raid the uh uh, Jesus, I'm forgetting the training camp. Jeez, why that take so long? Uh, yeah, but I saw them during the training camp, you know, and that was really cool, and I really got really excited to see more of Class 1B. It's just been so long that that hype's died down a little bit for me personally. I know a lot of other people aren't like that, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, Horikoshi brings it and, you know, builds that hype right back up in one, in one match, and then the rest of them I'll be super, super excited for. So the teams that Shinzo gets on, I really like how Horikoshi does this. He, Shinzo is in the first round and the last round. So basically, we're going to get some Shinzo, we're going to get some hype, we're going to see how his new abilities work and stuff, as well as Deku. Deku's going to see all this, because Deku's going to fight Shinzo, remember. And then the last round, once we have some time to really process it and you know see some other fights and get a little distracted and whatnot, Shinzo's going to come back in, and we're going to see some more stuff with Shinzo and how Deku you know handles that, as well as you know the rest of his team. But there's other people there. I'm just excited for Deku, because he's my favorite character. But uh, we're going to see how Deku like, you know, really handles that, because last time he just fell right into his trap. And now, now, on top of Shin Shinzo still having all of his old tricks, he's got the voice modulator thing that I'll get into. Man, it's going to be tough, especially because Monoma can copy his quirk. I think that's far more likely, even though I know the fandom wants to know what the hell happens if Monoma copies one for all. Like, is it just a straight-up copy? Does his arms explode? I don't know. But, uh... I think it's more likely he copies Shinzo's quirk and tries to make use of that because why would Minoma run to touch Midori and copy his quirk when he can just touch Shinzo, his teammate, who's right there with an OP quirk? I mean, that makes more sense to me. And before uh, the first match starts, Midoriya busts out the notepad. Heck yeah, Nerd Midoriya is back! I've been I've been missing his notebook, dude. I, it's one of my favorite character quirks about him. Again, character quirks, not quirk quirk. So the match is rather simple, between, uh, so far at least, between uh, Class 1A and Class 1B with the first round. Uh, the Class 1A students are kind of talking about how like they should be targeting people with the most troublesome quirks, and now that's just like common sense of the, the Class 1B team's probably going to be aiming for both uh, Shinzo with his OP brainwash quirk and Kaminari with his really strong like battle-type quirk. And then uh, they're looking to get, uh, I think it's Ibarra, the buying girl, that kicked Kaminari's ass just because her quirk's really strong and um, useful. So. They, Class 1B is smart enough to know that Class 1A is going to be looking for Ibarra, so she, they use her as a decoy, and the Beast guy comes out of nowhere, grabs Suyu, and just 
wax Kirishima. You know, Kirishima can harden. I'm pretty sure he can, like, really quick. So I don't think he's hurt or anything. But, like, I, that was just super quick, super fast. And right after this, though, Koda gets captured by the uh, Air Force Field guy, whose name I do not know. I'm going to start learning their names, I promise. But Air Force Field guy, as I'm going to call him for now, uh, he captures Koda with his new technique, which he, like, makes squares. Because he can, like, blow out a force field of air. He like, uses the lung capacity. So he makes squares, and he, like, surrounds Koda with them and puts them in a little cube that's soundproof. That's really important. It's soundproof. They've thought about that because Koda's quirk is sound-based. Smart. Smart idea. They should put Shinzo in one first, but whatever. Go for Koda, I guess. Uh, Koda did do something in this chapter. He uses birds to locate Abara earlier. Just want to mention that. Koda isn't useless. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot to mention that in the conversation where they're talking about who has, like, the most, like, deadly quirks that the other team will be aiming for, we get the best pa panel of Kaminari I've ever seen. Look at Just look at it. Yeah, I know, right? It looks like Saitama or something. It's great. Anyway. So we only get really concrete info on one more quirk from Class 1B because we already knew about the other two that we saw. Uh, the Beast quirk... But, oh, damn. What's his name? <laughs> so we do get information on one more quirk from Class 1B being the Beast Man who I was really excited to see. It. Uh, he had his name Shishida, I think. Shishida? Yeah, that, that sounds right. Uh, his quirk is Beast. It lets him get, like, really strong, enhance, enhance like, senses, you know, vision, smell, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he gets, like, a high from it, which I would assume would be distracting. But I think it's weird that they use the phrase, he gets, like, a high. Like, he feels real good. But the chapter ends on a pretty hype note. So Shinzo uses his new mouth thingy. And uh, he's like adjusting it or something, and then he says, Nice work, Shishida! And Shishida goes like, Hell yeah! Or something like that. I don't remember exactly what he says. But uh, it turns out that he, Shinzo, his device, copies other people's voices. It's not like a projector or anything like present Mike. It literally copies people's voices so he can trick them into responding to him, which is so smart. I love it. I love it. And it works. And the beast guy, who was a huge threat, is now just stopped, like, right there. And I, now Shinzo can, like, use him. He can be like, attack your teammate, probably. Like, I, that's what I would do. Or I'd say, tell him to, like, break the, uh, the force fields around Koda, probably, is the first thing I do, because I want Koda to be free. So, I don't know. Like, that seems, that seems pretty, pretty OP, pretty smart of him. He also has the bandages from Aizawa. Like, he has the same ones. Like, uh, it was mentioned earlier in the chapter. This forgot to say something about it. But uh, yeah, he has bandages that Aizawa has and uh, that mouth thing. The rest is just his UA uniform. So his costume's still in development, obviously, but already its functionality is awesome. So I'm really excited to see how this match progresses and how Shinzo uh, you know, keeps on doing stuff. I mean, now that this has all gone on, I'm pretty sure they're going to have an okay time. I mean, Suyu's there, uh, and she's not captured. She's like in the Beast Guy, or she was in the Beast Guy's hand or something. So she's probably okay now that the Beast Guy's under control. They got a lot of options now. I think Class A's going to win this one because of Shinzo. And I think that's going to set up the tension for the last match. And Shinzo being on that team is be like, well, Shinzo's really good, actually, even though he's supposed to be inexperienced. This is an uphill battle, even though it's supposed to be a handicap for both sides. Shoot. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. Uh, thanks for watching the review. If you got all the way to the end, please like, comment, subscribe. It really helped the channel. And, uh, yeah, until next week, guys. See ya.